I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and again, appreciate you spending some time with us and uh, hope, hopefully you're learning things that maybe you've never heard before. And it seems like every guest has a unique perspective on things, but uh, always Mormon and always come to Christ. And what a joyful message that is. And today I have Victoria Bringhurst who's been willing to come and share her story, and thanks for coming. Absolutely, thank you uh, for having me. We're still in Idaho, and so uh, this is a young Idaho lady, but you weren't born here. California. California born girl, huh? Yes. And wh how, what age did you come out here? Um, I was 13. And you've been here since? Yes. Okay. Oh, and Idaho, I came when I was 20. Oh, okay. I moved from Southern California to Northern California when I was 13. <laughs> a was different a, state, right? A little right? confusing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, what was your background? Were your parents Mormon? No, nobody in my family was Mormon. I actually have never heard of Mormonism you in my entire heard of life it? until I was 13. Really? It was, it was a Even sh in very Southern California, shock. huh? Yeah, which is really strange. Yeah, I've never they're... seen a Mormon church. I'd never met anybody that was Mormon before I met one of my girlfriends that lived across the street. Oh, and did she ever take you to church or invite she you did. to church? She did. That's actually how I got um, into going to church. Uh -huh. um, she lived across the street and she, we would hang out all the time and one time her mom was like, you guys hang out a lot. You should come to church. And I was like, hey, okay, that's <laughs> great. And so I went and um, that's kind of, that was my that's... introduction to the Mormon church. Yeah. Oh. And did you I know you eventually took missionary lessons, I guess. Did they come and teach you? Yes, and yes. What, now, was your, were your parents, uh, what religion were they? My mother, she was raised Catholic. We okay. were, my grandparents are very heavily Catholic. They okay. go every single day, devoted Catholic okay. since I can remember. Um, so that's kind of how she grew up, but we kind of grew up in and out of Christian and Catholic churches. Okay. Um, so at that point, no, nobody, Nobody was Mormon, and my mom actually, in the missionary discussions, was like, well, no, that's not what the Bible says. No. Well, that's what I wondered, if she was there with you during, because right. she had to be, I guess. She was, those, and yeah. she was kind of contradicting a lot, and I was like, Mom, stop! <laughs> Just let them talk, huh? Yeah, because it was kind of um, a way to kind of convert her at the same time, you know. Oh, I already sure. was in... In, like, oh, I liked the idea of having and, these and lessons. it really didn't matter what they said, you were probably going to join the church. And, right, oh yeah, because it seemed so appealing. And in a way to so, teach her. Exactly. We're going to get to meet her in a couple of episodes, so yes. look forward to that. Yes. So did you uh, understand what they were saying? What did you remember from those discussions? Um, honestly, I don't remember a whole lot. I remember a lot of talking about the plan of salvation yeah. um, and the kingdoms and whatnot. And actually, I should have brought that. Um, <laughs> a missionary drawing of the kingdoms and how you can obtain uh, you know, your place in the, the celestial, celestial kingdom. kingdom or yes. terrestrial and stuff. And he drew a pretty little sun <laughs> and it was highlighted. And I just, I should have brought that because it was quite funny. Well, he's probably but, trying to put it on a 13-year-old level, I guess. Were you 13 yeah. then at oh, the yeah. time? You're They'd saying? bring us cookies and all kinds oh, of treats. Boy. And okay. and so. Do you remember them talking about Joseph Smith? Um, not really. 
I mean, really? I, I honestly don't feel like my mind was there really listening <laughs> to what they were teaching because I felt like there was so much else going on, yeah. you know? Interesting. It was very strange. But you eventually decide to get baptized. Mm -hmm. Was your mother okay with that? She was. She, she allowed you to do at that? At that point, she really kind of supported it because she saw that it, I was involved and I was active in something and other you had a than... a friend there. And, yeah, I had yeah. friends and I wasn't getting into trouble, so she thought it was a, a good thing. Okay. And so she, yeah. She, so then you get baptized and... And then when you're active after that, I mean, you go to well, actually, Sunday school? Well, actually, I got baptized, and then we moved to Northern California. Oh. And so I, I knew nobody there that was Mormon, and so I kind of fell away, and I was, I don't want to go anymore. It's not worth it. It's not the same church, not the same people. You lost your, or your friend wasn't there, of course. Right. And did you ever go to it? I mean, did you find it? Um, eventually, Mormon? yeah. My mom, <laughs> it's just funny, actually. My mom went around hunting and searching for a Mormon church for me. Really? And well, she, yeah, she went that? and <laughs> talked to the people and was like, oh, my daughter, she's, you know, Mormon. LDS and she yeah. want, you know, well, she basically said I wanted to go to church, but she really wanted me to go to church and I was totally not yeah. in that mindset at that, at that point. Mm. Um, but yeah, she, um, she was very persistent in trying to get me to go. And yeah. then we actually moved into a house right across the street from a Mormon church, so oh. was, I couldn't escape at that point. <laughs> so then you were locked into going in. So yes. did you did you do seminary at all? Was that any I did part not. of that? Probably wasn't part of the program. And, no. Mm -mm. But you went to Young Women's. And I did. Did you do camp and all camp, that kind of stuff? Every year, camp. Listen to testimonies on fast and fast and testimony meeting. And yep. what did you think of those? Um, I thought they were boring. Oh, right. And very, I just... Kind of wrote, right? It was very hard for me to pay attention and listen to what they were saying. I, yeah. I mean, I loved the aspect of people getting together and having snacks and listening to something, but yeah. I was so not there for what they were saying. I was there well, for did, the community. Did you feel like you had a relationship with Jesus as before 13 or during the time you were in LDS? Uh, I felt Mormon? like I believed in God and I knew who Jesus was as being the savior of the world, but I don't feel like I personally knew who he really was. Well, you were and young his, before, right, and then right. as LDS, it's really not emphasized too much. I mean, it's, he's, he's our savior and redeemer and all of the words they use, but right. they really don't understand who he is exactly. Exactly. But, but you were taught that Mormon Jesus and yeah. 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 I was taught more of the Mormon doctrine yeah. than I... Book of Mormon, did you get exposed to that much? And oh yeah, that's that's basically all they pushed at you was the Book of Mormon. Yeah. I think I had more Book of Mormons than I did Bibles. Oh sure, yeah. Because they're just, yeah. here you go, here you go, you know. <laughs> right. So. so what happens else in life then? You get a little um, older and... Yeah, I go through college, kind of in and out of, of the church. And now you actually went to LDS Business. College is that right? I did yes. Yeah. Um, when I graduated that? high school, I went with a friend. Now, was that in Salt Lake? Where was that? Yes, at? Salt oh, okay. Lake, right in the heart of Salt Lake. Right, right okay. down the street from the temple. Right. I lived right next to the temple. We oh. were there all the time. That was your apartment, or? Yep, or we right? lived um, in the dorms. Actually, it was the. It's oh. a hotel. It's called the Plaza, oh, and okay. they renovated half of it for the dorms well, for the church. Where, okay. Now, were, were, were you required to take uh, institute classes with LDS Seminary, um, institute, LDS Business College? We were required to do, I mean, basically everything. You had to go to all of your meetings. You had to go to your meetings, yeah. You had to attend every single one of so your classes. So did you classes. have to have a bis bishop's approval mm -hmm. to go recommendation? Oh, yeah, the bishop, the stake president, oh, the, really? the dean of the school. I mean, you had to jump through all kinds of hoops. Well, so at that point, you were... Assuming that you were in the true church and you were doing what you were supposed to be doing, how yeah. did you feel about things? Yeah, at that point, I mean, I was just doing what I felt like was right and what I felt like everybody else in the church was saying I had to do in order to, you know, what was obtain, expected of you. Right, right. Okay. and so, um, I yeah, I went to college not really knowing what I was getting into, but kind of just... Yeah. You know, playing along. Any and trying church to... questions or theological questions that came up? That... You know, I, at that point, I, I just really wasn't, I didn't know anything about the church that would have been concerning at that time yeah. to question anything, except for really Joseph Smith. He's kind of what I had a hard time really giving him a place mm. in my life or in the church when people yeah. would talk about him. I kind of would 
get a little frustrated, and I think that's why one of my girlfriends in college was like, we need to go to watch the Joseph Smith movie. And I was like, mm, that's oh, weird. Down at, down at the Joseph Smith Memorial yeah. Building or whatever. Yeah. And so did uh, you do that? We did. We did that, and it was an emotional experience. And it, sure. what, you know, we left crying, and she's like, don't you see? And I'm like, I think so. I think I see. Because, you know, in that movie, it's, he's portrayed as a nice man right. and a messenger of God. And then you start to think, well, well maybe. <laughs> well, maybe he is nice. Yeah, you know, maybe he's a good guy. Huh? Yeah, maybe. They didn't. They don't talk about the gold digging and the no. many wives and all oh, that no. stuff, do they? No. No, no, no. If I yeah. would have known half of that, I would have run for my life. <laughs> it's amazing what we learn after. It is yeah. amazing. So what happens next? Then do you continue on at school? And yeah, um, I think I started to build a testimony from that point. Um, I guess my definition church? of a testimony. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I had a really hard time bearing my testimony and giving talks when they would ask me, I just felt uncomfortable. Um, just because of your youth or the little time, not little, but the time you'd been in the church, you weren't yeah. as prepared as others? or I, I don't know. Yeah. I just think I was, I have the attitude of like, I want to be the best at everything I could possibly be. I'm very competitive. Yeah. And so in the church, that, that's good for that that's kind of ego yeah, because yeah. you can, you know, rise. Yeah. And um, I always wanted to do that, but there was always something that was telling me that it was not authentic and it wasn't. Something just behind the scenes. Did you actually can... start preparing to go on a mission? I did, yes. How, I came home from college that. and I was ready to leave life behind and do my duty as a servant of God and, you know. Felt like the mission was the next thing to do. And yeah. So what happened? So I talked to my bishop and I had all my papers ready to go and I, and I actually was talking um, to a missionary at that point, which is now my husband. And um, a, a missionary, he was out though. Was he, he was, a, yes, he, he was served serving? in my ward and then they transferred him. Oh, he was in the ward here in yes. Idaho? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. no, in California. Oh, in California, Yeah, he Sorry. served in California. When I went home from college from oh. Salt Lake, he was there and I met him. On his mission? Yeah. Oh. And I was actually going to leave on my mission within that, that those couple of months that yeah. he was being transferred. And so I think he used that as his time to, you know... <laughs> stop me because yeah. I told him I'm leaving on a mission there's nothing I could do oh, you know so what did the bishop say so the bishop surprisingly you know I've had many meetings with this bishop and he's always been like stay away from boys stay you know <laughs> that's been his you know talk with me when I go in there and so when I asked him you know should I go on a mission or should I marry this 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 boy and he told me to marry the boy and so to me that was like my jaw dropped like now, you wow. mean to marry the return missionary when he became a return missionary? Right, right. To yeah. marry him when he was off his mission. Yeah. He had to be... And that's what the bishop counseled yeah. you, rather than go on a mission. Yeah. Interesting. Do you yeah. have any rationale for that uh, um, kind of decision or what? <laughs> I, I guess he knew my husband. He knew he thought he was a good guy, and I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. Did you ever say anything to the bishop about concerns you had about the church? No. Oh, no, you can't bring those kinds of questions to people no. like that. <laughs> think They think poorly of you if, if there's ever any questions. Oh, so as far right. as he knew, you were preparing for your mission. That's very strange, isn't it? Strange yes. counsel. Were yes. you surprised at that? I was very surprised, and sure. I, I think that's why um, I decided to not go on my mission and pursue this relationship because I was so astonished at his <laughs> response that I thought, wow, you know, this must be... Maybe the, he was inspired. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. So then what happens? Um, and so um, my husband gets off his mission, flies me out, we get married. That's here in... in it's in, 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 yeah, in Twin Falls. Twin, Twin Falls, Falls okay. Idaho. Um, and we got married in the temple there, did everything that was what did worthy you think and of righteous. The it was very scary. Was it? My first experience when I got endowed, it was very scary. Um, I had a lot of questions of why we did what we did in the temple. Yeah. And especially when I left um, that night, I had a very, very strange experience. Very, um, I would say like almost a demonic encounter. Mm. I felt that I brought something home with me. I, of course, at that point, I didn't know what no. was going on. But yeah. this, at this point now in my life, I understand 
clearly what was going on. So, Is there anything to elaborate on that, or is that enough said? Um, <laughs> well, I mean... You just felt that evil, uh, yeah, that I, evilness. And you know, in the church they teach you if you feel anything wrong, you, you raise your right hand and, you know... <laughs> cast them out. And you something. cast them out, correct. And yeah. it was something I was doing over and over and over and over, and it wasn't working. It wasn't helping. And so finally I called my husband, and he came over at like 3 o'clock in the morning. It was like he prayed and... Did, the, it, did his thing too. Or? Yeah, and I guess, I guess it went away. Well, eventually, huh? I'll eventually. Did you know anything about masonry or anything like no. that about what went on in the temple, or, no. or that the, the blood sacrifice that the Jews were making, no. representing Jesus and all that? We didn't, you didn't understand. I had that. no idea yeah. what was That's going on. That's not anything we're really taught, is it? As LDS, we don't really have an appreciation for what the temple truly is. Right. Did you know that women couldn't even go into Solomon's temple and Herod's temple? Mm-mm. Yeah, because they're not Levites. Wow. Yeah, even Jesus couldn't go into the temple. Wow. <laughs> anyway, so that's just this the way the LDS have kind of turned that all over. And so, yeah. so anyway, you stay active or stay a member through this, and, and yeah. your husband's still active now. Then at this point, and yeah, we. Yeah. Um, so what happens? So I, we move here and we're married, um, and I just kind of noticed. You know, his, his entire family are Mormon, and so, and they're very tight knit. Yeah. You can't really make a move without them knowing what you're doing or yeah. being involved, right. um, which is not always a bad thing if you're a close family, but when you have the church yeah. and their, you know, yeah. rules involved, it's a little tough. But so we were, we were trying, but I noticed my husband, um, it was hard for him to get up to go to church. I kind of would have to come on, let's go to church. And he yeah. would, you know, I'm thinking, you're a return missionary. You're supposed to be dragging me yeah, to church, me, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so um, that was kind of like, um, what's going on here? Why, why doesn't he want to do this anymore? Um, and so I had a hard time with that at first yeah. um, because where he was going was complete, you know, lack of trust in God. And he was questioning who he was in general. He was questioning the church being true and everything, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he mostly questioned God. He, he really? because of who he was taught God was his whole life, he had a complete different interpretation Inter of who God really is. Yeah. And it, it was really hard for me to stomach because of the things I've gone through in my life. And I've seen God's grace and his forgiveness yeah. and yeah. his, you know, never-ending love. And he didn't have that, that appreciation of who, who yeah. Jesus is. Well, I mean, he is. never really had an experience to, to understand that because he's always lived according to the Mormon yeah. rules where you're, you're not really allowed to step out of line. And so how do, I, you, oh, go ahead, how do you have many opportunities to find Jesus when, yeah. you know, you're not left for him to lift you back up when you're down? Well, so. I was just interrupting, sorry, but it just seems like so many that find out the church isn't true or have questions about the church, they're not anchored in Jesus. No. And so they yeah. can't move him with him to another aspect of their life. A Methodist going to Baptist would not leave Jesus behind. He would take him right, with him right. because he's part of him. He's, that's been that grace and that, that understanding we have. But in, as an LDS person, you're just only anchored in the true church in and, the church exactly and you find out it isn't true it's right. yeah and when you get out you question you know where do i go next what you know what church do and i go to I next and you have to realize it's not about what church you go to it's about you know who's in your heart is the lord right. jesus in your heart and that's something that he had to grasp and understand that was this upsetting for you to it see was. him struggle and, it was because yeah. um i knew god was completely different than what he had been taught and i hadn't been taught what he had been taught so i didn't i didn't know the hurt and the confusion that he's that he was going through at that point because everything he thought he knew was to be god was a lie and so for me to say, you still have to believe and love God and trust in Him because He's delivering you, it was hard for Him. It wasn't there, yeah. Right. So what finally happens to you two? Or you and first you, I guess, and then Him, or yeah. Him and you? Well, we come, so after, I would say, we moved to Rexburg. He went to BYU, Idaho, um, a couple months after we got married. And then we lived there for about a year. 
I was pregnant with my daughter, and it became really hard for us to go to church. I was very sick, oh, okay. and so we yeah. would go sacrament and then leave. Yeah. And um, the school started to notice, and they would call him and question him, what's going on? You guys need to be going to church. And, you know, he said, look, this is... Because they have an attendance requirement, too, right? right? Yeah, yeah, you can't miss church and be, you know, attending. Even if you're pregnant and more than sick matter. and everything else. And yeah, he... Um, so we couldn't and we we tried to talk to the bishop and say look this is what's going on yeah. um, but i think he just he was fed up with yeah. us not going and he just really didn't understand why he didn't think that was a good enough excuse so he so he pulled the, he pulled his endorsement he lost his job we lost our place we, oh, no. i mean i was eight months pregnant and oh, that's sad we're like, oh my gosh at this point we didn't really know that church was false we just started to see kind of the true fruits right. of it yeah. after these things started happening. Where's the love? Huh? Right, <laughs> exactly. you know, where's yeah. the compassion? I mean, yeah. it's not like we completely went apostate, yeah. I guess, as they yeah. would say, and so, so. So when did you start really, or when did he, or the two of you really kind of come to Jesus then? Um, I would say probably the past two years is really when my husband has let Jesus kind of come in. I would say me, um, when we left Rexburg, we moved to Oregon, um, and we kind of got out of the Mormon scene, yeah. and then I got a job at Allstate where my boss was a member of the Mormon church, oh. and he would ask me, have you gone to church? Have you gone? <laughs> and I'm like, this is so unprofessional. Yeah. This, you know, yeah. it can't be connected, but anyway, I, he laid me off because I wasn't going to church. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And so um, that was kind of like the gut punch for me. Really? You know, yeah. the, these, these people say one thing, but they act a completely different way. And that was hard for me to stomach. Yeah. Um, and so after that, it was like, we, I just kind of wanted to get it out of my head and forget about the religion. And then my husband had this drive. He just wanted to find more and more. I think it was a healing process for him. He wanted to discover the doctrine and understand what was going on. So he started learning the bad news about yes. Mormonism. And so when did you finally come to a Christian church? How did that um, We started going to a Christian church in 2014. Um, we tried a couple. Wow, that's just recent then. Yeah, recent. yeah. And, uh, we was tried that here in Idaho? Yes, it actually was in Twin Falls, Twin Falls, I believe, yeah. What did you think the first time you went? Um, well, I had been to Christian churches before, okay. so I felt right at okay. home. Yeah. I felt, oh yes, I don't have to wear these annoying skirts and <laughs> sit still and I can stand can up and clap and, and you know. Yeah. Um, for him, it was quite funny actually. He was very <laughs> weirded out and um, he, yeah, it was something for him to get used to, that's yeah. for sure. But by then he had seen that the church wasn't, we're going to hear his story next time yeah. too, but he could see that the church had some doctrinal and theological problems and yeah. historical problems. And yeah, I, I think at that point we we weren't really heavily into finding out um, as far as like the doctrinal issues. We were kind of just personally leaving the church for how they've treated us and, and, okay. and the way that they were and, and just we couldn't keep up with well, the way they lived. Well, did you understand who Jesus was at this point then? I think inside my heart, something, something knew who Jesus was other than who the Mormon church yeah. taught he was. And I think that's what kind of was bringing us did out. Did you understand grace at that point? No. No. No, did I that did come not. Later? I thought I had to work for every inch yeah. of grace Even then. that I would receive. Oh, yeah, when absolutely. When did that happen that you got this? Because you mentioned to me earlier that you've had many what you'd call little born-again moments. Right. It was one of those coming to realize who Jesus is and the grace that he offers? Yeah. Is I, that one of them? I think um, what really um, opened my eyes to that was just kind of being lied to and deceived over and over, yeah. not just in the Mormon church, but even in a Christian church. I, I was tired of not knowing the truth, so I started to read my Bible uh -oh. and, <laughs> and find the truth out for myself because yeah. I was tired of people saying, here's the truth, and then being led astray and being deceived. Yeah. So that was my awakening. I was like, I'm tired of being lied and to. I need to know the Bible. truth now for myself and, and not. Did you, did that, was there a moment that you finally said, oh, I get it? Oh, man, there's been several. 
Honestly, I feel like this past year has been, there's been so many things that I've learned and discovered about God and about the Mormon church that, I mean, my love grows stronger for him every day because of what he's taken me out of. Yeah. And Did you ever understand that it was his righteousness and not what you could do, what you could earn, that it was his righteousness that makes us clean and I we felt sinners, like right? in my heart I knew that, but everything that was being taught was, was it that. had to be you that was righteous yeah. enough to be worthy in his sight. But really, right. you can't clean up your house before you come <laughs> to Jesus. you got to just come how you are so he can change you. You, you know, know, I don't ask this of everybody, but have your prayers been different? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Mine have been so different. Yes. Yeah, what do you think? It's, Expand on that just for a second. Well, um, before it was very uh, uniformed and very, you know, yeah. eloquent and, you yeah. know, these big these and fancy and words and yes. Yeah. And now it's just from the aching desire of my soul to reach, you know, my maker and for him to hear me and, and know that, that I love him. Yes, it's yeah. beautiful. And it knowing really that is. he loves us. So I guess you can see God's hand in your life just... Oh, bringing yes. you to this point, isn't it? Absolutely, I can't Terrific. deny it. I, yeah. I'm the biggest advocate for that because why live your whole life without yeah. being in His presence? Because it's so much more worth it and it's just so much more fulfilling than living without Him. Yeah. You know, it's just not, it's, you're, it's not worth living without Him in your life. It really, I've come to discover that. Yeah, wonderful. Well, there's just a little bit of time left and anything you'd want to say to your family, your friends? or. Um, just the loved ones that are still in the Mormon church, just wake up. They and just don't open know what they eyes. don't know, do they? Yeah, you know. Trust the Bible, maybe, and yeah, read the Bible. Yeah. Actually, read the Bible with open eyes and an open heart, yeah. and an understanding that God loves you, and there's nothing you can do to win Him. Yeah. Your sin has already been paid for yeah, through the love him. of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's so wonderful that your uh, family has kind of come along. I'm sure there's been some that have kind of been upset at your at your decisions oh, yes. and stuff, but yes. to have your husband with you and, it's and a your blessing. mom and yes. so on. It's, yeah, it's, I thank God for that every yeah. day. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I just appreciate you so much. And thank thanks you. Thanks for coming and sharing. And this young lady's... How far along can we say that oh, publicly or not? Get, yeah, we're yeah. five months pregnant, five I guess. Months pregnant. She doesn't look it a bit, but <laughs> the world knows now. And this is your second, uh, second little one, and yes. your first new daughter, so cute. And yes. Thank anyway, you. thanks, uh, Victoria, for sharing your your story, and of course. I hope people will listen and maybe take a chance at reading the Bible, and who knows yeah. what they could learn. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Ex Mormon Files.